Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and thanks for checking out the channel. I wanted to provide a quick update to you regarding the West Mountain Radio Rig Runner 4008, which in the last episode, I took apart and found some issues with some of the solder joints. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend going back and watching it and getting an idea of what I'm talking about. However, I did reach out shortly after I made the video, but before I released the video to the public to West Mountain Radio via email, and within seven minutes, I got a response from Joey over there at West Mountain. Seven minute response time is pretty good in my book. I'll take it. So I was very, very happy to hear back so quickly from West Mountain Radio. And again, I appreciate everything that they've done. And Joey straight up said, hey, are you looking for another unit? And I said, no, I'm not looking for another unit. In fact, I didn't think that would be fair since I, I know that I bought it as a factory second or a reefer or something along those lines. Uh, but I said, hey, could you tell me what I got to do to fix this? I can't seem to get the solder to it here. And within a couple more minutes, Joey responded again and was like, well, you know, they're, they're copper traces. And I didn't, well, A, they didn't, I didn't think they were copper traces. But Joey said, hey, they're copper traces. They might require a little bit more heat. And with that, I was able to give it a little bit more heat and re-solder some of those joints that didn't look too good on the West Mountain Rig Runner 4008. So everything's back up and functional with this thing. And, and I, again, I got to just stress that um, the support that West Mountain Radio provided was very, very quick and responsive, rapid, very detailed too. Uh, but also I want to mention and give a shout out to a couple people in the comments section of my last video because they were also very helpful. An example of what I'm talking about is this individual here, Bill Freeman, who his call sign is KE1G. And to me, this is the ideal example of a good Elmer. I had a couple questions in this video regarding was I using terminology correctly? And he was kind enough to answer those questions for me. And then he went and gave a couple different scenarios of Hey, either it's not a big deal, or on the other hand, maybe there is some some issues. And he gave me a, a little bit of suggestions on how to check to see if this would be an issue. Now, I really appreciate his very, very detailed response. Probably one of the best responses I've ever seen on, on my channel. Uh, again, you can go ahead and you can check that out there on my last video with the comments. But I did just kind of read what he had to say, and I took that advice as well as the West Mountain Radio advice into consideration and I decided to heat up the solder that was already in there, use a solder sucker to suck out the solder and then re-solder it with my own solder. Long story short, everything seems to be working fine now and the solder joints are, are better. I'm not even concerned about it. And I guess after reading this too, I'm a little bit more reassured that it's not as big of a deal as initially I thought it was seeing missing solder from some of those um, connectors. And there are a few other comments as well, like David Brown mentioning that, hey, maybe you need to use a higher tip temperature or higher temperature because the, the solder is lead free. And uh, that was a great suggestion by multiple people. So I did take that into consideration, especially after I heard back from Joey over there at West Mountain Radio. I can con continue down or you could just go read the comments yourself. But thank you guys all for commenting. There was a lot of really good information in here. And I think one of the things that I've I've learned is you know what? The community is filled with people who are definitely willing to help you. And you just got to take the time to reach out and ask somebody. But I did want to make this update video. So it didn't seem like I was leaving West Mountain Radio in the dust because they're a great company, in my opinion. Other people will have different opinions, and that's fine. But I didn't want people to be discouraged from my last video on, on purchasing a West Mountain product because here's the here's the real deal. I may purchase a power distribution panel that was made in China and it has a no name brand on it, like a uh, Shuwen Zun Hai. Pardon me. I'm not trying to butcher it. Um, but the problem with that is, 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 is this an established company? If I have a problem, who do I need to reach out to, to get this fixed? Well, I probably got to go through Amazon and hope the seller is going to be willing even in a year is the seller going to be willing to replace this. Who knows? Right. Well, I contact West Mountain Radio. They contacted me back in seven minutes and they immediately offered to help me. You know, that's it's pretty remarkable. So they're 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 the quality. I might be paying a little bit more, but the the customer service is there. The assurance of knowing that if you need something fixed, it's it's gonna be fixed. Um, but I will be reviewing and comparing the West Mountain Radio to this Shanzu. I'll give you guys a sneak peek peek right here. 
in uh, in the near future here. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have also the MFJ line of Anderson power distribution units as well. But with that, I just wanted to give you an update. Everything's working fine on this uh, 4008 now. Thank you again to West Mountain Radio and everybody who commented. Very appreciative of everything y'all do. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Until next time, 73.